Now, this is all speculation, right? So, but here's, here's a little story I want to tell you, Mike. Once upon a time, there was an apocalyptic preacher who came out of the Essene movement around 2,000 years ago. Very charismatic. Um, preached basically the end times, that, you know, the end of the world's coming soon. The, um, the culture at the time was very superstitious. I mean, very, very, very superstitious. And um, people were looking for a Messiah because just like you, like they, they read Daniel, and so they were looking around expecting some type of Messiah to come. Um, so this Jesus guy is walking around, preaching, uh, getting a following. And, um, and, and he died. He caused trouble. Um, he died by crucifixion. I'm not, I'm not sure why they crucified him. Was it just sedition or something? Um, was it blasphemy? Maybe, who knows? But, he, uh, but I'm just looking at your facts here, right? Death by crucifixion. So I'm granting that. Okay, so he died by crucifixion. Ladies, uh, find them to tomb. Um, as I said earlier, I'm not confident that that actually happened. Why? Because the sources for the ladies find the empty tomb was lit, written a lifetime after, probably a thousand miles away, probably in either Greece or Italy. This happened in in um, Palestine area. So now we have a problem. How how can we be confident that this actually happened? Especially when we have um, variations in the story. Um, Anybody who could have verified it was most likely dead or a thousand miles away or both. Um, independent appearances of Jesus' life. Okay, so let's say people who followed this Jesus guy around from the Essene movement um, loved him deeply. And when he died, it shook them up. It just devastated them. And as people do today who have lost loved ones, they had an experience of Jesus now, if you, I believe that we can doubt the 500 witnesses story. I believe we can doubt even the 40 witness, uh, 40 days appearing to people story. So all those independent appearances, it might have only this, these independent appearances could have been visions like we see so many times today among only two or three people. And then it kind of spread like wildfire, like, I saw Jesus. Now, this happens today, even with us. Uh, I never can pronounce his name, but Saya said Baba. This same thing happened with him. People still see him around, even though he's been dead for like 10 years or something. The violence endured to the, uh, by the apostles. Again, how do we know that, for example, they were martyred for their belief in the resurrection? It only says that up maybe at best for two people in the Bible. And we don't know exactly why they died. We don't know that maybe they did recant uh, about a bodily a re resurrection and they were killed anyhow. They could have been just killed for sedition. All the other um, stories of martyrdom are in the Apocrypha or later traditions, sometimes a hundred years later or more. How, how why, why should I be confident that, and, and we know that people die for things that they know to be true, but are actually mistaken and they're not true. Uh, enemies of Christ converted. I believe there's only one, and that is Paul. And I think Paul, is, psychologically, it can be shown that people who uh, commit a lot of heinous acts against a group might feel guilty about it. He also had this vision. He the guilt and the vision convinced him um, that he had seen Jesus as well. Do, do you want mine? Yeah. Um, I have a feeling mine's so, going to like mine better, though. <laughs> probably, probably. But let's just go one through five to begin with about how plausible I think each is. Uh, death by crucifixion, I think it's about 50-50. Ladies finding the tomb empty i think that that's about like you know five percent or three percent or it's very low independent appearances i think that state statement number three implies something that's untrue i think that when you read paul first and then the gospel second you get a very different perspective on what these appearances were what their character was and you find that it fits a lot more within the sociological understanding of the way that humans act 
Number four, violence endured by the apostles, almost entirely baseless, at least as far as the later second century stories about the apostles of Jesus go. And then number five, only true of Paul, although I don't know that he was necessarily an enemy of Christ. I think that he was more of like a persecutor of Christians. I don't really think that he understood much about what the beliefs of Christ were by Christians when he was persecuting them. My story, I think that we should first start with our earliest um, sources, and those are the sources of Paul. What we find attested in here, I think, um, indicates that there was some kind of cult that was uh, worshipping some figure as a saviour. That figure may or may not have been a historical figure who had died in the recent past, but at least they came to believe um, of him through visions, uh, visions that are very much like in common with cargo cults and millenarian cults in general, um, visions of this figure playing a salvific role, and they came to deify him and consider him an exalted figure. From there, later on, about 40 years later, hagiographies in a no novelistic style were written by anonymous authors and circulated amongst Christian communities, which convinced the bulk of Christianity to eventually adopt a largely historical view based on primarily the work of Mark originally, which can be demonstrated to be a mimetic um, a narrative influenced by Old Testament and the Homeric epics. And then from there, we find subsequent gospel authors redacting the original mark, elevating and increasing the story until eventually we have a almost entirely um, mythical a narrative about a historical figure who may have existed and may have actually taught certain things, but we are unsure.